modes of propagation, one of them being multi-mode and the other being single mode. So each require the fiber to be of different physical characteristics. So multi-mode can be implemented in two different ways. One of them is step index and another one is graded index. And then you have single mode of propagation. So let's first look at multi-mode. Multi-mode is so named because multiple beams of light source can move through core in different paths. All right, so look at first, uh, look at A and B. So these are multi-mode propagation. So you have multiple different light rays propagating at the same time. All right, so let's first look at multi-mode step index. So in step index, the density of density of the core is constant throughout right and obviously the density of the cladding is lighter than the density of the core so the core is more dense and the cladding is less dense but the cladding is uniform the cladding is of uniform density right so since that is how it is so light rays so they since the density of the core is same so light rays move along a straight path but the total internal reflection happens at the interface of the core and the cladding so it happens right over the interface right just where the core is touching the cladding so over here 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 right whenever the light rays propagate and when it's touching the interface of the core and the cladding that is when it's getting reflected back right so once again to reiterate in multi-mode step index the density of the core is uniform throughout and the density of the cladding is lesser than the density of the core and light rays move along the straight path but when it reaches the interface or the surface or the edge of edge where the core is touching the cladding that is when the light ray gets reflected back all right and that is how the propagation happens but in multi-mode graded index so the core the core is the pink region over here the core is not of uniform density the density at the middle that that is over here the middle has the highest density and as you move towards the edge the density reduces all right so in graded index propagation mode the density of the core is not uniform as you move towards the edge the density reduces all right and obviously the cladding is of lesser density than the core so when the light propagates it propagates in more of a smoother curve right because it's getting a little bit reflected at every little point over here as the density is not uniform so it's being it's propagating in more of a smoother form all right because it will not move in a straight path as the density is not uniform it's actually changing so that is basically the difference between step index and graded index. In step index, the core is uniform throughout, but in graded index, the um, heart of the core has the highest density. And as you move towards the interface of the core and the cladding, the density kind of reduces. Right. So in single mode propagation, if you look at the pictures over here, and the core here is extremely tiny. See the cores of multi-mode is higher, but the core of single mode, it's extremely small. So in single mode propagation, the core is very small and the cladding is of higher region. Right? Normally in single mode, you propagate only one light ray. Right. So once again, you have some other pictorial representation of the transmission mode of fiber optic cable. Right. So now let's talk about some of the differences between single mode and multi-mode propagation that we just looked at. So sing in single mode, obviously, the just 
saw that the core is extremely small, but in multi-mode, the core is larger, right? So the dispersion, the light is dispersed lesser in single mode, but um, in multi-mode, the dispersion is higher. And since that is how it is, loss of signal is also more probable in multi-mode. Now, single mode is normally suited for long distance applications. And multi-mode is also used for long distance application, but shorter than single mode. But it's normally uh, for emitting light rays in single mode. Um, laser injection diodes are used, but in multi-mode, we use light emitting diodes for the emission of the light. So these are some of the differences between single mode and multi-mode propagation for optic fibers. So optical fibers are defined by the ratio of the diameter to their core, or to the diameter of their cladding. All right, so you see basically over here, um, the types are defined according to diameters of this core and cladding. All right. These are some of the common sizes that are available. All right, so let's look a uh, little bit into the construction of fiber optic cables. So at the heart, you have um, a glass or plastic core and this core is surrounded by a cladding now both of these are made of glass except the core is of higher density and the cladding is made up of glass of lower density right and then this glass portion is covered by a plastic buffer <clears throat> now and then in turn this is covered by DuPont Kevlar for protection. Now, this is actually used in fabrication of bulletproof vests. So this protection is basically given because glass is extremely fragile and it can break any moment. And then the whole structure is covered by outer jacket, which is normally made up of PVC or Teflon. Right, so there are basically three types of connectors for fiber optic cables. Um, the subscriber channel connector is normally used for cable TV. So basically, sorry, so basically this connector is normally used for cable TVs. Now that one uses push-pull locking system and the straight tip connector is used for connecting cable to networking devices. So networking device would normally use why does that keep happening? So um, networking device would normally use uh, this straight tip connector. Right? And it MTRRJ is another type of connector that is the same size as RJ45. So this this third type of connector, I'm gonna make the same mistake again. So this one is over here is used for uh, receiving and this one is used for transmitting. <clears throat> so in fiber optic cable, the attenuation is actually flatter than in case of twisted pair cable or coaxial cable and just to reiterate uh, we need fewer repeaters when we use fiber optic cable right so um that was basically it on fiber optic cables i'll leave it here kind of uh, try to get over i mean go through this lecture by within a day or so because we will be having our live session on this particular topic sometime later this week so maybe on friday or saturday we'll be having a live discussion session so if you have any questions or something you did not understand ask me during that live session all right so take care guys um see you guys around 
Bye.